Penal Code Section 273.5, corporal injury, is defined as willfully committing corporal injury on a spouse or someone you live with or a fiancé or someone you're in a dating relationship with or the mother or father of your child, and this corporal injury results in a traumatic condition. So what is a traumatic condition? Typically, a traumatic condition is something like you know, a black eye or broken bones or severe lacerations or abrasions, that sort of thing. Penal Code Section 273.5, corporal injury, is one of the most common domestic violence charges that we see. Now, it's a wobbler, and what that means is it can be charged as either a misdemeanor or a felony. However, usually we see it charged as a felony. Some defenses to the charge of corporal injury on a spouse or cohabitant can be self-defense. Uh, for example, your husband or wife is about to break a vase over your head and you push them and they fall down the stairs injuring themselves. Uh, another defense to corporal injury is that you just didn't do it, you were falsely accused. And we see this a lot when a fiance or a spouse or a boyfriend or girlfriend accuses the other of some sort of domestic battery. And this can be for all kinds of reasons. Um, we, see, we see this when there's custody issues, we see this when there's financial issues, and sometimes it seems that it's just out of spite. Now in our practice, we've had a lot of luck with domestic violence trials. Uh, there's one case that I remember in which a girl accused her boyfriend of throwing her against the wall, holding a knife to her throat, throwing her on the bed, and, and threatening her. We took this case to trial. It came out in testimony that the girl made two calls to 911. The first time she called 911, she told them that she wanted her boyfriend evicted and they told her they don't do that. So she called 911 a short time later and the second time she called 911 she made the allegations of abuse. When asked uh, on further cross-examination why she didn't advise 911 of the abuse on the first call, she said it was because her boyfriend was in the room with her and she was frightened. However, later in testimony it came out that she didn't make that phone call from her apartment where she was with her boyfriend. She made the call from a neighbor's apartment and her boyfriend wasn't present, so she had no reason to be frightened. At this point, the jury didn't believe her, and our client was acquitted. A domestic violence conviction can have very serious consequences. It can make it difficult when it comes to gaining employment. It doesn't look good at all on a uh, application where you're required to divulge uh, any criminal record that you might have. If you're trying to obtain a professional license, it can also become a problem. Uh, and also, and this is more important to some people than others, uh, but under federal law, if you're convicted of either a misdemeanor or felony domestic violence charge, you'll lose your right to own or possess a firearm for the rest of your life. At the Can California Defense Group, we know how important your case is to you. We know that the outcome of your case can affect the quality of your life and even your freedom. So if you or someone you know has been charged with domestic violence, Give us a call and we can discuss various ways in which we might be able to have your charge reduced or even dismissed.